1938 has been a year of thunderous eruption. Again a year in which one continuous news story overshadows all others. War. War in China. Japanese planes circle over Hankow. A puff of smoke rises, a crash, then another and another, until the great pall of disaster spreads over all China. War in Spain. Squadrons of black-winged bombers over Barcelona. And in a few moments, more than 400 have been torn to fragments. Even nature joins in the general upheaval. Ice pours over the Niagara Rapids, piling up 90 feet high against the base of the famous bridge. And man's work crumbles before the force of nature. But kings and princes still take their share of the world's floodlight. In Egypt, 17-year-old King Farouk takes 16-year-old Farida to be his queen. And a royal baby is christened at the hay. Crown Princess Juliana of Holland carries her daughter, Beatrix Wilhelmina. And our own king and queen continue to play their part in the life of the empire, supporting Britain's industry. One of Britain's outstanding achievements has been the Mayo Plain. Two machines as one until they part in mid-air. The world shakes a little as the barriers come down and the Nazi machines steamrollers ancient Austria into a province of the German Reich. Sport, the Grand National, 36 starters and beaches takes its toll. And in a neck and neck finish battleship on this side, though bought by a riderless horse, wins the toughest steeplechase in the world. And Battleship was ridden by a 17-year-old jockey, the youngest ever to win the race. The boat race is one of the closest in living memory. Past Chiswickgate, Cambridge almost draw level, but at the finish it's Oxford. To prove for the second year that they've broken the hoodoo. From Margaret's Westminster, the wedding of Miss Anne Bowes Lyon, niece of the Queen, to Viscount Anson, among the guests are their majesties with Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. <laughs> Wembley, the cup final, in the last minute of extra time, much is laid out by a foul, and much takes the penalty kick. And that's how Preston North End win the cup from Huddersfield Town. And for today, Tom Smith becomes the proudest man in the world. From Wembley Stadium to Ibrox Park, Glasgow, for the opening of the Empire Exhibition. Britain's answer to a world of nationalist propaganda, where Britain shows the world how the Empire lives and how the Empire works. I have the greatest pleasure in declaring it open. Then, through mile after mile of exhibits, their majesties begin the royal tour of the British Empire in Scotland. Hitler goes to Rome. And in Britain, the balloons go up. 500 flying elephants to hang a protective curtain of steel wire round London. Epsom, the Derby. That the Gazette brings out the world's largest newsreel lens to bring you superb close-ups of the most important of Epsom's half a million visitors. Unposed pictures, such as you can see only on the newsreel screen. And down the straight comes a mysterious horse like a stone from a catapult to make Bois Roussel from France the winner of the Derby of 1938. Taylor <laughs> King of an island nation takes command of his fleet and the might of Britain puts to sea. America's Donald Budge beats Austin to win the men's single. But Budge is so unbelievably good that more news is made by the battle of the two Helens, Helen Jacobs and Helen Wills Moody. And against the Helen Jacobs who twisted her ankle, Helen Wills Moody wins the championship for the eighth time. Australia, flirting with death on the speed track, but this time death takes control. Ten seriously injured in one of the worst crashes in the history of motor racing. In a
ramshackle machine, a merry-eyed Irishman flies the Atlantic by mistake. And wrong way, Corrigan is a world hero. With their Majesty's visit to Paris, Britain and France demonstrate the solidarity of the Anglo-French axis. They dine with President Lebrun in all the splendor of the time of Louis XIV. Bagatelle Gardens of Paris, Republican France salutes Britain's King and Queen with music and dancing with cries of Vive le Roi. On his return, His Majesty breaks his holiday for a day at his camp, where public schoolboys holiday with boys from industrial areas. Fifth test at the Oval, and Len Hutton makes cricket history with a record score. Among the first to congratulate him is Australia's Don Bradman. Fastest man on earth is George Easton. The average of his two runs is nearly 360 miles an hour. Why not make him a speed car? Then the frontiers of Europe are threatened. Mr. Chamberlain's momentous decision, the meeting at Berchtesgaden. Garden. Then Godesburg with the ominous roar of Germany's army mobilizing. And as the negotiations reach a deadlock, Britain prepares. With gas masks. men joining the forces. And then Munich. Final effort for peace as four great powers of Europe meet in the democratic way, round a table. And four great powers sign a pact that shapes a new Europe. Premier's return, he stands on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Within a few hours, the Nazi machine sweeps into Czechoslovakia. Two royal brothers are reunited in Paris. The Duke and Duchess of Gloucester meet the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Non-stop, three RAF machines and nine RAF pilots fly further than man has ever travelled in one hop. 7,162 miles from Egypt to Australia, a world record for Britain. The greatest ship of all time is launched from a Clydebank yard by Her Majesty the Queen. With hope and prayer in our hearts, we send forth upon her mission this noble ship. <laughs> Perth signs for Britain and Count Chano for Italy. The world watches the rise of Europe's new frontiers of concrete and steel. Germany's Siegfried Line, which half a million men are rushing to completion. And Germany looks across the Rhine towards the Maginot Line of France. 1938 will be remembered as the year in which the French government first permitted the newsreels to take pictures inside the greatest line of fortifications the world has ever seen. A vast underground city where a quarter of a million fighting men can live and work without coming to the surface for months on end.
France is prepared. As the eruptions of the old year pass, we welcome the new dawn of preparedness for peace. We join hands in the new spirit of joy and friendship. shakes a little as the barriers come down and the Nazi machine steamrollers ancient Austria into a province of the German Reich. And in error, the army marches too. For the Great St. Patrick's Day Parade, Minister for Defence Aiken takes the salute. And once again all the world waits for Dublin and the results of the sweep on the Grand National. In 1938, there are 36 starters, and as usual, Beechers takes its toll. And in a neck and neck finish, battleship on this side, though bolt by a riderless horse, wins the toughest steeplechase in the world. And battleship was ridden by a 17 year old jockey, the youngest ever to win the race. The boat race is one of the closest in living memory. Past Chiswickgate, Cambridge almost draw level. But at the finish, it's Oxford to prove for the second year that they've broken the hoodoo. Dublin in June finds a 78-year-old poet playwright, Dr. Douglas Hyde, installed as the first president of era. As if to prove her tolerance, Catholic era elects a Protestant president. And one of the new leader's first duties is to attend the great Dublin show. Hitler goes to Rome. Epsom, the derby. Half a million people are here to see the world's greatest horse race. Round Tattenham Corner, the Pathy Gazette is using the world's largest newsreel lens to film a mysterious horse shoot down the straight like a stone from a catapult. Make Boiroussel from France, the winner of the Derby of 1938. Wimbledon, America's Donald Budd beats Austin to win the men's singles. Budge is so unbelievably good that more news is made by the battle of the two Helens, Helen Jacobs and Helen Wills Moody. And against a Helen Jacobs who twists her ankle, Helen Wills Moody wins the championship for the eighth time. In a ramshackle machine, a merry-eyed Irishman flies the Atlantic by mistake. And wrong way Corrigan is a world hero. It's a great day in Era's history when her troops take over from Britain the manning of the Spike Island Fortress in Cork Harbour, which has been a British military post for more than 150 years. It's the first stage in the removal of British troops from Irish soil under the Anglo-Era Agreement. And Prime Minister de Valera arrives to hoist the tricolor of Era as the guns boom their salute. 